Hello, beautiful ladies. Let's see if I can get through this vlog with this cough drop and not cough. Let's see how it goes today. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome again. This topic is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, as you see, part one. I'm bringing this back around because I had a very in-depth conversation at work and it was a really heated type of debate and it carried on until later on that evening on a telephone call. I'm asking you to please keep an open mind. Uh, I don't like to be judged, but if you have to judge me, okay, so be it. But please keep an open mind and listen. Where it fits you, hopefully it helps. But it's been brought back around again. So as I'm recording this vlog, I'm asking you to listen to my experience. One day I uh, had some dreams. One night I was dreaming. And in my dreams, I kept on seeing people in church and they were shouting and having a very good time and and, and and the whole entire congregation was really, really uh, in the joyful celebration of the service. I noticed that these people were speaking in tongues and some of them were really, really uh, anointed and they were they were really into the flow of the Pentecostal apostolic movement. I didn't know the church. It was just some, a dream that I had. And it seemed like I kept on having these dreams. I cannot remember if these dreams occurred when I was married to my first husband in the 80s or was it before? But, um, he had belonged to a Pentecostal movement, and this church was a very well-known church in Los Angeles. This church had a very electrifying pastor who was a bishop over many, many churches. Well, I was dating um, my husband, and uh, he had explained to me about uh, the Holy Ghost and what the Holy Spirit was all about. Now, my mom had always told me, don't get caught up in that Pentecostal movement because it don't take all that to worship God. Those people be yelling and hollering and screaming, jumping all around, flipping and all that at church and sweating and carrying on. Those women don't wear lipstick, they don't wear earrings, they wear these long skirts and all this. Oh, my mother was warning me, don't get caught up in that. So when I got to his church, my first husband, I noticed that this was what mama told me to stay away from. He and his brother had taught me some of the scriptures and the way the apostolic Pentecostal people were. Um, so, like I said, I can't remember if these dreams were before I met him or while I was dating him or married to him. Got to his church and there was those people, they were really into it. Now, I came from a very humble church. And we didn't do all of that rejoicing in the Lord. I think I heard one person speak in tongue there, I believe. But, <coughs> pardon me, there I coughed anyway. Excuse me. So, uh, let's see. So, this is what went on. I was talking to a co-worker about it. And then um, got, like I said, got uh, in the van later on, and then I had another heated argument. But from my experience, let me tell you, after I visited that church for a couple of times and listening to what he and his brother, my first husband's brother, he was t talking to me about, I started learning more of the scriptures that I wasn't exposed to. So... Um, I said, okay, well, um, 
uh, I think since I'm interested in you and we're going to eventually get married and all this kind of thing, I need to make up my mind whether I'm going to come over into your faith or if I'm going to stay in the Christian Methodist Episcopal faith. And uh, anyway, we got married and uh, I uh, was seven months pregnant. And I had found out that my husband had cheated on me. Well, he said that we weren't husband and wife, we were engaged. However, I still was messed up because when you are engaged, you should be truly devoted to one person. So I had a whole bunch of stress in my mind, but yet I was getting up, going to church, trying to find some kind of relief of my troubled, troubled mind, my first pregnancy, first husband, and I'm seven months pregnant. I decided that I needed a closer walk in my faith. And they kept on saying, why don't you get baptized? Why don't you get baptized and receive the Holy Ghost? So I remember, I believe I got sprinkled as a child at the church my mama raised me in. So I said, okay. I, at the church, they had the baptism pool ready, and I said, you know what, I'm going to get baptized. I'm going to get baptized because they said, this is being baptized in Jesus' name. I said, okay. I knew that once I held my breath pregnant, my baby was going to be okay because I was doing something that was going to be beneficial for our lives, and that's being baptized. So I got in the water, held my breath, I was submerged for a second and I got up and the people who baptized me were telling me to uh, go ahead and, and, and tarry for the Holy Ghost. And I said, what's that? And they said, well, you know, um, you, you, you get around a, a group of people who are believers and we have a room and you can go in there with them and then they, they pray and they call on the name of the Lord and they keep on and then the Holy Ghost would jump on them, meaning that once they started praising the Lord, then the Holy Ghost will enter into their soul and they will speak in other tongues. I said, okay. I went over to the side. The room was full of people trying to receive the Holy Ghost. So I went over to the side and a lady was talking to me and telling me, just take everything out of your mind and start praising the Lord. The tongues are going to take over. You're going to receive the Holy Ghost. Excuse me. I had so much on my mind that I couldn't even concentrate on all the goodness of what God had done in my life. I couldn't even concentrate on Jesus Christ. I was really in tears and sorrow because I recently found out that my, my husband had cheated on me. So I really couldn't tarry. I really couldn't labor and and, and, and ask the Lord to come into my life because, <coughs> pardon me, I just had so much on my mind. I noticed that when you cannot block life situations out of your mind, it's very, very hard to tarry, to concentrate on God when you're trying to receive the Holy Ghost. So they told me, once you receive the Holy Ghost, when that Holy Spirit is entered into your soul, uh, you will begin to speak in an unknown tongue. Now, remember the other vlog I made about uh, uh, when I was praying and how the tongues took over. So I put in, put in the description about the tongues. But this is part one. And I'm going to continue in part two because I really don't want this vlog to go over 10 minutes. So, um, yeah, I ended up leaving church. I did not receive the Holy Ghost. And I got home and I was still in torment because I was really in love with my husband and couldn't understand why in the world would I be having a first marriage so depressing and I'm carrying his child, my first baby, his third one that I had found out that he cheated on me and he had fathered a son. So I was really, really sad. But I got home and I 
began to weep and read my Bible and I kept on studying the Acts 2. I was studying Acts 1. I'm going to put those descriptions in the, those verses in the description. But it's a few seconds after 10 minutes. I'm going to stop. Ladies, I'm praying for you. Let's see part two in a couple of days.